Hi everyone, Sid here, back in the car with another improv journal entry. Uh, this weekend I actually had one of the best, my best improv weekends ever. Um, I think I'll go in order. A little context uh, first though, Will, who's uh, one of my troop mates in Waterworld 2, he led a workshop uh, for many months. And it's a shame that I'm speaking about it in the past tense. Uh, and I actually guest led one of those uh, classes, which was really cool. But long story short, he organized a couple shows um, that would be that would be uh, he he'd, he'd book shows for the workshop and pick students who were interested uh, to be in that show and. Uh, this Saturday, I return to Indie Night once again uh, with one such troupe, and it was really good. It was my personal best outing at um, Indie Night, and considering it was our first time performing together as a team, uh, it was a really outstanding and amazing job. Uh, I see a lot of promise, and as a matter of fact, there are... Um, there are gears in the works in the background to have us perform again. So that is going to be really exciting. Uh, one thing that I do want to get into, though, as, as far as um, this is worth going into a play by play, because I remember last time having trouble explaining what Game of the Scene is. And one of the sequences we did was textbook uh, Game of the Scene. Now. Will, who's been drilling us as far as uh, Game of the Scene is concerned for uh, almost as long as I've known him, uh, is right in his point that uh, any two players should be able to escalate the game on their own without, like, edits. Uh, however, uh, tagging someone out and putting one of the characters in a different situation is... It's the way that I'm most comfortable playing game moves, which is why I... Um, tend to go to that. It's a habit of mine. Uh, however, uh, you know, it, it shouldn't be necessary, but this is the example I'm going to give you. So, and I think this was even the first, uh, the first sequence uh, of our set. But basically, uh, Thomas and Will, uh, sorry, Thomas and uh, Nguyen, Will was not in the, the group. He was in the audience. So Thomas and Nguyen uh, start a scene, and I forget what the, the, the full context was, but at a point, Thomas said, yeah, uh, we're, we're finally gonna get ready to run that marathon together. And Nguyen went, oh, really? I'm, I'm, you're, you're, you're serious? I'm, I'm gonna have to run a marathon? Uh, I was drunk, I, I, I didn't know what I was saying. I didn't think you would take me seriously. Now, I don't know if Nguyen knew what he was doing in that moment, but I saw a game move right there. So I booted it on stage, I tagged Thomas out, and then I said, man, I've finally been, uh, I've finally got accepted to medical school. So, uh, you know, just like we said, we're going to become doctors together and save lives. And uh, Nguyen and I explored that a bit, and he caught on and said, man, uh, I was drunk. I was just saying that I didn't think you'd take me seriously. And then... Uh, after a bit of exploring, Ali tagged me out and she went, ah, oh, I got, I finally, I'm joining the military, uh, just like we said we would. Um, uh, we're we're going to join the, we're going to join the army and, and serve our country together, blah, blah, blah. So that is really, uh, uh, oh, and obviously Nguyen who went, uh, oh, I was drunk. I didn't know you would take me seriously. So that's an example of game of the scene that is done through editing. And what is cool for the person being left on stage um, is that you basically have to do the same thing over and over and over again uh, and just rely on your scene partners to, um, to, to make what you're doing funny for different reasons and more and more interesting reasons. And actually, I'll, I'll, um, I'll mention one thing, though, something that... I'm giving myself permission to do, and I think uh, this is going to be universal. Um, when, when I'm trying to do game of the scene, because ideally you want to escalate the game and and raise the say, raise the stakes, so to speak. Uh, however, I, despite uh, the example I, I just gave you, I still suck at game of the scene. 
I have difficulty identifying what a potential game is and thinking of game moves. So what I've given myself permission to do is if I can see something that looks like a game and that I could do a, a game move from that and I can't think of a way to escalate it, then I'm giving myself permission to think of a lateral move or maybe even a, a step back if that's what it takes. Ideally, obviously, I want to heighten the game because that's that's what's more interesting and you want that, that ascending hill. Uh, however, it's hard enough to learn a new skill and, um, you know, it's basically giving myself permission to do it poorly, uh, to do it even poorly. And I think that helped me, uh, that helped me out. And also, just as an example, because uh, um, a, a common mistake that newbie improvisers do when they, uh, they try to learn game of the scene, and I realize I said that as if I'm not a noob uh, myself, but a common mistake that is done is that you will escalate so much that you don't leave any room to go. Like, that's why I, I was really happy with my choice of um, medical school, because deciding to become a doctor is a big step from deciding to run a marathon. Uh, however, there are still room, there, there are still, there's still room to go even higher from there. Uh, an, an example of, of um, escalating too much and basically screwing my scene partners by not um, uh, leaving them any room to heighten even more would be, let's say, uh, I, I just, um, I just volunteered to join NASA and go to Mars. We're going to be on the first manned mission to Mars. So going from running a marathon to going to Mars uh, is, is, you know, where do you go from there? Uh, we're already in space, literally. Um, so yeah, uh, another thing that happened, and I'm just mentioning this in passing, uh, I, I initiated a fishing scene with Victoria, uh, who, was, um, who I talked about in the last uh, entry, and... Yeah, and I, I made the mistake of giving her a pseudonym that was too close to her real name. And uh, there was a little nip slip there, and I called her by her real name. Uh, fortunately, I did not have to bleep it out. Um, that being said, I initiated a fishing scene with Victoria. And it was, um, we established that we were father-daughter. And I don't know why, oh boy. I just did everyone a favor and edited out that uh, pretty bad sneeze. So like I was saying, I initiated a fishing scene with Victoria and we um, established each other as being father-daughter. And I'm not sure why, but like pretty early in the scene, I was um, I talking about how uh, we've been fishing here for a while and I said, I fucking love fishing with you. And the audience laughed pretty loud, uh, telling me that we had just stumbled upon a game. So I cemented that game uh, well, I cemented what I thought was the funny thing by explicitly saying that she was five years old. Um, I, I probably overshot it a bit. I should have went with seven, but five, you know, the, 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 the whole thing is inappropriate words in front of a young child. Uh, and, you know, I was happy of the, uh, I was happy of the, the spontaneous discovery of a game just by listening to the audience, which is what you want to do in general. Um, however... Uh, unfortunately for me, the when I was thinking of game moves, the only fucking swear word that I could think of was fuck, uh, like I just did now. And yeah, so basically that's an example of giving myself permission to do side moves. It wasn't the best sequence, but, but uh, you know, again, anything worth doing is worth doing poorly at first. Um, and yeah, I think the, the rest of the set went well. Again, uh, I enjoyed it so much that uh, I, I uh, yeah, I joined in. Uh, basically, I enjoyed it so much that I'm eager to, to do it again. And uh, I'm glad that all of them uh, agree. Now, uh, Sunday. Sunday was fucking awesome, not for the show itself. Um, you know what? I'll cover the show first. So basically, um, there was, um, uh, it was two halves, and me and a bunch of uh, other uh, newbie improvisers or semi noobs or whatever, new, new people compared to the people who were doing the second half. Uh, we were doing, uh, you know, games and things like that. And it was a, a total showcase. There was no format, no audience voting for anything like that. So it was just, you know, pick people um, and, and do scenes together and, and move on. 
so that was really cool and that was like um, the that was the first time that I've done a show where I wasn't nervous at all uh, because first of all I, I knew almost everyone who was in the first half uh, and I knew also that it was basically a showcase so basically it was like you know me and the buddies me and my buddies getting together and shooting hoops together for for absolutely no stakes so that was really cool um, I did a um, I did one word at a time with Nazir and I did uh, a four-person scene with um, Nazir Angela and Carlos I basically the and it's funny too because in the workshop just before I did I was on stage once with Carlos so on Saturday on Sunday I only did scenes with troopmates uh, that uh, that day, um, and that was not the the best part for me. The best part was that the workshop that was led for free um, was led by uh, Peter from Elephant Empire, uh, and if. If you're in Toronto or if Elephant Empire is in your area and you have an opportunity to see Elephant Empire perform, take it. Um, I, I was introduced to them for the first time at Sketchfest and I didn't hear any praise of them uh, until like a couple minutes before their set. I, yeah, it was, I enjoyed their set a lot. And not only that, I was, well, I wasn't surprised to see uh, one of them leading an improv workshop, but man, that Peter, he knows his improv. I'll, I'll put a link to a video uh, of theirs below. Um, their, their, their channel is sadly lacking in videos. I really like the ones uh, that I did see. Um, one of the series of videos you will particularly enjoy knowing this channel and uh, the theme of those, those videos. Uh, I'll leave that as a mystery, but the video that I'm actually going to link to, um, Peter's the one who's uh, leaning against the wall at the beginning. And that guy, um, I almost never take notes during improv workshops. Uh, it's not that I don't want to be coachable, I put emphasis on being the most coachable. Um, however, it's, it's pretty rare that I, that I hear something that is it's pretty rare that I hear something that is so good that I'm like, I need to capture this to, to make sure I never forget it. And I think part of it might be the fact that I have easy access to most of the, the um, people leading the workshops. So worst case, I can always ask them later, whereas Peter was visiting from the outside. However, um, a lot of it was that was just really good stuff. And I... I listen I had fun I had a fucking blast playing clap focus at the beginning of the workshop which to anyone who's an improviser should know how basic and rudimentary clap focus is it's literally the first thing you do when you go to an improv workshop uh, uh, most of the time so yeah and and the reason I'm going into this is because after this guy had established himself in my eyes from, um, you know, seeing him perform in sketch and seeing this fucking improv genius teach a workshop and going, holy shit, this guy's an improv genius. And, and when we were doing notes after the show, um, he said that um, at TSC, uh, the, the four-person scene that we did uh, was the cleanest four-person scene he had ever seen at TSC, which is so, such fucking high praise. And, and it, again, speaks to knowing your scene partners, how, how, how great an advantage it can be. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll give you the quick synopsis. It was basically a um, uh, family getting together for Mother's Day. And one thing was for sure, though, um, I decided there's no way we're starting with all four of us on stage. So I walked backstage uh, while, while the rest of them were setting up and I kind of just peeked at the scene, seeing how it developed. And the dynamic that they built was that um, the mother was neglecting her children to pursue her dreams with a hot new yoga instructor boyfriend. So I soon walked on as the boyfriend and, uh, you know, did the dynamic of being the 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 stepdad quote unquote that everyone hates and that may or may not be taking advantage of the mother and shit like that and it was just uh, um it was it was a good scene uh, considering that it was four people uh, i really enjoyed it and getting 
Um, getting that comment from Peter was fucking amazing. So I think that will be enough for this entry. Thank you so much for watching. Please leave your comments, like, and share. Uh, you'll find links to my social media below. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel and uh, hit the bell to get notifications. Um, improv Journal is not the only thing I do. Uh, if you're new to this channel, I explore. I encourage you to check it out. Uh, there is one playlist on my channel that's uh, libertarian philosophy that'll give you an, uh, a nice introduction to my mindset this was back when i was filming in my bathroom but uh, you know the, the the words are just as true uh, to me i probably stand by every single word that i said back then now on that note thank you again for watching you take care uh yes and always be coachable and uh, yeah i'll see you soon you take care